Hey guys, welcome back to the Jello Night the Woods channel. What I've got laid out for you here is uh, the sum total of my knife collection. Somebody asked me just the other day, was I uh, a collector of knives? And uh, basically the answer is no. Um, but I do have a collection of knives. And I've laid them out here just to sort of give you a bit of an idea of, uh, of everything that I've got and everything that I use. Uh, although I've got a collection, I wouldn't say I'm a collector. Um, I don't have any knives here that are not used. Um, form and function is important to me over and above um, the aesthetics. Aesthetics comes into it, but you know it's got to work. It's got to do the job that I'm looking for it to do. I'm not somebody that spends uh, tons of money on knives that are going to sit in a showcase. I can understand why people collect knives. Um, you know, in some cases they're they're beautiful objects, and you've got to appreciate the craftsmanship that goes into uh, some of them. But I've never really been that much of a collector. Um, I've been having a look through some of my kit and just sort of deciding: do I need to keep it? Do I need to replace it? Um, can I consolidate stuff down? You know, is there redundancy there that that I don't need? Um, so on and so forth. So being as I had everything out, I thought I'd do a quick video response to uh, the person that asked me, uh, so I can't remember who it was, just a quick question. Um, so here it is, let's just run through. I'm not going to do a review on all of these uh, knives right now. I'm just going to give you an idea of what I've got, where it sits, what it's used for, uh, maybe why I like it. Uh, so starting off, let's start with the fixed blades. So uh, my first fixed blade was a Mora, um, Mora knife. Uh, this is the, I believe it's the 740 MG version, military green MG, and it came with the uh, military green sheath, plastic sheath, rather like this one. Um, I was using that for a while, that was my first kind of bushcraft outdoors knife, and it performs admirably. I still go back to it on occasion. Uh, really good knife, got absolutely no complaints with it. Apart from the sheath, didn't like the sheath too much. So I saw this more a Mickey knife. Um, being advertised for about 11 quid somewhere and along with this grey sheath it also came with this little leather sheath so I thought well for 11 quid I'll take a punt and uh, although I don't particularly like the light colour on it I'm going to take some shoe polish to that and uh, try and sort of dye it a little bit to a more acceptable colour for me I haven't got around to that yet but we will do um, and, and, and actually, although it was a very, very snug fit to begin with, this sheath has performed admirably for this knife. Really like it. It's got a nice uh, top to the sheath here that covers the handle quite well. The, um, the guard there fits really snug to this part of the sheath. It's got a fairly secure pop stud. Not a great fan of them, but it works. And it's got the rivets down the bottom to stop the blade coming through. So uh, really quite pleased with that. Then a recent purchase, in fact two recent purchases from Haney Haynes. I went up to Wales just recently and popped into my friends at uh, Haney Haynes and decided to spend uh, a couple of quid on seeing what this Condor Bushlaw was like. Now, I've seen a lot of videos on the Condor Bushlaw, especially the 2010 version where the Ricasso on them um, you know, comes to about there and people complaining that the cutting edge wasn't quite right and it needs really grinding and the handles weren't brilliant so on and so forth. So I decided to see what all the fuss was about and for 30 quid um, I actually think you're getting, although some of them may need a bit of work, you're actually getting quite a knife. I don't know how many of you guys out there that have been able to compare the two versions together, the 2010 and the 2011. There are some significant differences here. I've already mentioned the Ricasso, but the thickness of the blade was uh, about 4mm on the old 2010 version, whereas it's down to about 2.5 or 3 on this one. The, um, uh, what else was there? The handle materials are available in either wood or uh, micarta. Um, I think they were the only, only differences, actually. I think it was just the Ricasso and the uh, thickness of the blade and the grind were the only three differences. Something like that along those lines. Anyway, I was lucky enough to be able to compare a 2010 version with the 2011 version and compare the 2010 version which had the micarta handles on it to the 2011 version I've got here with the wooden handles on it and that 2010 version is quite a hefty knife I've got to say it's got some weight to it there's no doubt about that uh, of course modeled on the uh, Rain Mir style bush law um, but I think it's a cracking knife so I've given it a punt and I'm going to do a separate review on that one my thoughts for the uh, the future 
Um, but I also, while I was picking that one up, picked up this little Condor Bush Buddy. I don't know how many of you have seen this one, but I've, I've never been really much one for, for neck knives as such. They've always been sort of belt carry or pack carry. Um, but I'm going to take a pump with this Condor Bush Buddy and I'm going to show you uh, a video on how I'm, I'm going to change that and the results of it. Just pimp it up a little bit, make some additions, so on and so forth. So that's the fixed blades. Then moving on to uh, to the left, we've got the uh, Rough Rider um, section. I heard a bit about these Rough Riders and they're very, very cheap, made in China. Um, a lot of people have said that they are really good quality little knives for the money. And when you bear in mind that each of these knives has cost, what, somewhere between sort of eight and 12 pounds, I think, at the absolute most, um, they're not too bad at all. Quite impressed with them. The little sunfish here is one I use for a, a gentleman's folder. I take that out to weddings, parties, whatever, anywhere I need to carry a little blade on me. Um, it's only about an inch and a half. Um, it's sheeple friendly. People love the scales on it, you know. Uh, this one here I bought as a bit of an impulsive purchase. Um, it's the elephant's toenail with the jigged bone. Um, but actually when I got it through I was really quite impressed with the size and weight of this thing as well. So that's actually gone in my mushroom collecting um, little pouch that I take out as well. I know you're going to see some videos on the uh, mushrooms coming up fairly soon because the season is, uh, has started. I've seen a few out there uh, after some heavy days and warm, uh, he heavy rainfalls and warm, warm days. Then you've got the canoe which is just the normal white bone and that's one I use uh, as sort of work everyday carry. Uh, nobody's you know taking offence to me having that one at work and using it. Um, again, fairly sharp. I think it's 440C stainless steel on all of these these here, um, but they come pretty sharp out of the box. You know, I wouldn't say they're sh uh, shaving sharp or hair poppingly, as uh, you know people like to say. Then we've got two British clasp knives here. Um, one of those goes in my survival kit. Hopefully, you would have seen that. Um, good enough for the British Army. Good enough for me. Um, locking, pretty sturdy, hefty knives. For folders, then a couple of Oppenels, the non-locking number two, which is really just a keychain knife, and that's what I got it for. Um, not sure what to do with that one now, so it's just sitting around waiting for me to put it in another little pack somewhere. Then I've got the number six that I have sanded down the handle on. I've treated the handle, as you can tell by the blade. That one's been used uh, used an awful lot. Um, the little one, number two here, hasn't got the Vibra block, Vibra block uh, system on there, but these other two do. So we've got the number six there and the new number nine. Uh, that's the one I, I bought to replace the number eight that I gave my brother. I like the slightly larger um, blade on it, slightly larger knife in general. This one I'm going to sand down, treat and personalise a little bit. Uh, get around to doing that one. You've got a tiny little Spyderco bug and this is one that I will currently use just to stick on my work ID badge um, extendable holder type thing. Just sits on my belt along with my work ID badge and I've got a tiny little blade there if I need it. I've used this numerous times for packaging at events, that sort of thing. Uh, then we hopefully you've seen the videos done on these ones. There's the San Renmu 710. Um, that's the HCR 13 MOV steel on there. Came really quite sharp, really pleased, really good knife. This one, along with the Kershaw Half Ton, have been in my sort of home rotation. I'm using these a lot for opening boxes, dog food packaging, cut down, um, loads of just tons of different things around the house that I need a blade for. Uh, so those two are still being used, and I'll do a quick review video on those again uh, after I've introduced them, obviously, a few, a few weeks ago. I'll let you know how I'm getting on with them. This one is a Smith & Wesson. This one was called, I, th I think, the First Response. Um, not too pleased with this one. It wasn't very expensive, only about five, six quid. But um, it's not a great knife. It's a, it's a liner lock knife. You know, that's, that's no problem with that in itself. But the, the blade's too small. It doesn't hold an edge. It doesn't sharpen up particularly well. Um, this has been relegated to my fishing tackle box where all I want to do is cut a couple of lobworms in half and trim some line up, you know, maybe open a few shot where I need a blade to do that. But not a great knife. Uh, then on to the Victorinox. So the um, Soldier was one I picked up. This was a bit of an impulsive buy. When I first saw this come out, I thought, I've got to get that. Really like the look of it. Um, it it's This is one I struggle with. This is one I really struggle with. It's got like a chisel ground blade on it. It's two-thirds serrated, one-third plain edge. It's got this 
one handed opening function here which is all well and good stainless steel it's got some great tools on there the blade locks with a liner lock even if that liner lock does operate in the opposite direction that right handed people would use it in um, it's just one of these knives that I kind of really want to like it but I'm struggling to so far we'll see how that one works out um, then on to uh, okay, let's go to the Huntsman this is this is what I would call my old faithful um, I have had Victorinox knives in the past this is certainly the longest one that I've kept hold of um, without having had it either pinched given away lost um, or just I don't know beating the hell out of it um, the black scales are a bit scratched up now and, and this is the one that really sits in my possibles arrangement whether that's the possibles gillet or the um, possibles pouch or on the belt whatever um, but you know you, you would have seen me light fires a fire with this I think in, in my outdoors video when I went out with my brother the saw blade is great for that it's, it makes a great striker and it's got a fantastic combination of tools on there it's just perfect for me a small blade that I can use for any food preparation just taking the, the rind off oranges um, you know preparing any little food stuffs like that pair of scissors on there for cutting string or fabric when you need to um, save you know the, the the main blade and of course the main blade on there and I also got which was a present from my wife um, who works in the sort of corporate or used to work in the corporate gifts um, industry she got hold of a couple of these and, and gave me one so that I think was the um, camper model or something along those lines anyway or it's the same as the huntsman but it hasn't got the wood saw and the wood saw for me is critical notching cutting down little um, bits of stick for various different things for tripods or whatever I'm using it for um, and of course lighting fires with a fire still that comes invaluable so this one's still got a place it sits around the home in my bedside table for whatever I use it for um, doesn't get used that often I might actually substitute over the canoe or the soldier or the farmer for this one every once in a while as an EDC blade that I just carry about my person um, and then of course we've got the old soldier which was uh, my absolute favorite knife um, for quite a while in terms of EDC that I just recently upgraded to the Victorinox Farmer uh, for the simple reason that the uh, uh, the saw blade is on there and, and again that's invaluable instead of changing between the uh, soldier and the huntsman when I was taking a dog for a walk if I wanted to just copy some hazel for different bits I, I thought well I get this one and I carry that with me pretty much all day again I still use the soldier every once in a while just for you know a change in my uh, EDC for, for work and so on and so forth but there you have it guys there's nothing there that really is there just for purely looking pretty um, it's all form and function over looks so uh, there you have it. Give us any comments, any reviews uh, of my videos, rate, subscribe, all that sort of business. And see you again in the next video soon.